here we go then. It's Monday, the trip computer has been reset. The weather is not the best, it's 8.5 degrees. Let's just straighten you up a bit. There you go. And for the first time since starting this YouTube nonsense, we are heading east. Let's go. Oh, balls. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Hold on. Are you in? Bugger it. Right, take two. Let's go. You have reached your destination, 26 High Street. It is on your left. Okay, so here we are in Mablethorpe. It would be so easy to be kind of sniffy about this because, yeah, let's be honest, it's a bit grim, but I rather like it and I actually find it quite uplifting. I've had a good walk around the town. And as usual with places like these, it's amazing for people watching. <clears throat> and there's something uplifting about the British spirit. People determined to have a good time and enjoy themselves against pretty much all the odds. And then you get the occasional gems and it's normally elderly couples and they're just a joy when you happen across a couple in their 70s or even older walking along holding hands you can sneak here a little bit of their conversation a lifetime shared a lifetime behind them I love that there's a wonderful array of ta tattoos to behold and that's just the women Not bad to be fair. First glimpse of the sea all day. Didn't see a sausage when I was driving down here. And it's wonderful, isn't it? 
doesn't matter how grotty the town or resort or village is, if you've got a beach, there's a good day to be had. This is really rather nice. Obviously it's April, Easter's only just behind us, so really quite empty. But you can imagine that on a hot summer's day this place would be packed. And why not? That's looking back into the town. When you're a kid, what else do you need? You've got the beach, you've got the sea. See, this is actually really rather lovely. You have to remember that places like these are uh, a relic of times gone by. These resorts, they date back to the 50s and 60s, when people didn't go abroad. Package tours weren't a thing. You came to somewhere like this and you stayed in a B&B &B or in a caravan. And you damn well made the best of it. And you were grateful for it. And you know, Life was hard, man. This was luxury. I'm filling up a bit for times gone by when I was a kid. Turn right, Mayor's Bank, then bear right. Follow A1031 Mablethorpe Road for 12 miles. And many of the residents were evacuated. There were many fire engines and firefighters. After 500 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A18. I've made it to the top of the ridge now and I'm looking down at where the fire was on Saturday night. And it's a real scene of devastation very black, charred, scored earth and a few taller trees that have managed to escape the Cross flames. the roundabout but and take the, the second gas, exit. The gas that would have been here has totally gone. I think the other thing that's worth trying to get across is the smell. I can feel the, the smoke get into my clothes, into my eyes, and it's still um, very raw. So what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to walk down off this ridge and I'm going to get right down towards the houses. Yes, please. Thanks, my lovely. Have a good night.
we are live in the M1. Oh, I tell you what, if you're still with me, let's mention this. We're coming up to the Horns Bridge Island. And this used to be the point where three major mainline railways used to intersect. Um, not intersect as in um, a, a junction where you could swap lines or anything like that. But at this point here, here's one railway bridge. There were three bridges for three separate railway lines. Um, obviously, two of the lines have gone and the bridges were eventually dismantled and only one remains. And I believe, I was certainly told, not 100% sure if it's true, but there was a point where it was decided that all of the, um, because the UK had so many uh, different rail railway companies and different because the UK had so many different railway lines operated by different companies there should be a central hub a central point where passengers could move from one line to another so that all parts of the UK became accessible uh, via the uh, there were various lines and Chesterfield was chosen as that spot as that central location and that then through bribery corruption uh, movements by the powers that be Birmingham managed to wangle it instead and hence New Street Station and Snows Hill and the other one that I can never remember the name of, um, which caused Birmingham to obviously grow massively. Could have been Chesterfield. Oh, bollocks. There's a stunning woman in the car behind me. Funny old thing, life. She'll never know that I've fallen head over heels in love with her. Oh, you're having a laugh. At least I can see the nice lady again. Lovely nose. Very Rita Tushingham. No, oh, she's turned off. Another love affair gone south. Nice while it lasted. Wine and supper. What shall I have for supper? Okay, so as it was um, an impromptu ad hoc little shopping trip, I didn't have any bags and I absolutely refused to pay for a bag. So I didn't buy much, just um, wine, butter, and some onions that I needed for tonight's curry. Two onions, to be precise. So, to help me carry them to the car, I put uh, an onion in each of my front pockets. And I now have a very real insight into how the President of Ukraine must feel in the underpant region. Because that guy has got a big pair of balls. Whereas I am a less heroic figure who has an onion in each pocket. And if anybody's interested in the ongoing saga whereby, not in this guy or any of the others, but only in my daily, the Rover 45, the Honourable H.J. Rover, um, more often than not, when I exit the car and when I clamber out, 
my right hand or easterly plum is becoming really quite severely compromised. Still haven't, well, the update is that I still haven't found a solution to this issue. Uh, work in progress there. Oh, uh, there is another update to just to make things a little bit more miserable, and I've got no idea why. But now, every time I get out of the car, forget about the compromised plug. I mean, I wish I could, but you forget about it. Uh, every time I get out of the car and then touch the door to shut it, I'm getting a bloody electric shock. Do you remember years ago when Ford Cortinas used to have that dingly dangly thing from the back bumper that was supposed to earth the car of static electricity so that didn't happen? And I at least, if not everybody else, assumed it was all a load of old bollocks. Maybe it's not. So if they still sell them, maybe I need to buy one. And possibly some more restrictive underpants. I can't say I've researched it scientifically, but I do think that I do think that there's an argument that underpants that are dried on a a kind of uh, on a radiator or just air to dry, I don't think they have the same level of elasticity that underpants do that have been tumble dried. I think tumble drying makes things more restrictive, clingier. I suppose it must do because they, you know, you can shrink stuff, can't you, if you tumble dry it too long. Maybe that's what I need to do, start tumble drying my underpants. Or maybe it's just the fact that they're really, really old and they've lost their elasticity. I am due some more pants. I can't remember when I bought the last batch. I think it was about... Definitely two partners ago, possibly three. They're certainly past the best. Ooh, a 75. Here we go then, final look at the figures. Not sure how many miles I've done, didn't do the trip. It's going to be about 230. I've got 27 miles of diesel left in the tank. Fuel consumption 43.4. Average speed 38 mile, miles an hour. And home in daylight. That's nice. Ow! Forgot I had bloody onions in my pockets. Ouch!